The Bible is filled with story after story about the need for rest. Today, with the readings in church, we are reminded that rest is both a right and a responsibility, a right for all people, with no exclusions, and even for the land itself, a responsibility to take care of both ourselves and all of God's good creation around us. As we began the season of Lent at St. Luke this year, we were all offered a gift, a gift to remind us that rest is a right and responsibility. And I hope you took with you a lavender sachet and you tucked it in a place where you might be reminded of this commandment. As we began the season of Lent on Ash Wednesday, I shared with you a short list of possible Lenten disciplines, probably the easiest list you ever heard before. But I ask one thing. Were they too hard? Did you take a nap? Did you gift someone some rest? Did you play hooky or let something go? Did you spend just two minutes, once or twice, breathing in the breath of God and remembering how for the other 1,438 minutes that God was taking care of you, even at that most basic level? Rest is harder than we think sometimes, isn't it? And that is why it is one of the Ten Commandments. Our bodies, minds, and spirits need this rest, and it is a sign of faith to be able to let go and let God. Naps are a statement of faith, you may have heard me say before. But we push back against it, our own worst enemies sometimes. We pretend like who we are depends on what we do, acting as our own creators and not trusting in God. We judge ourselves and others too when we rest because our society has taught us that that means we are lazy. We hear a message about the requirement of rest, the need to listen to our bodies. We hear the suggestion to maybe just let our eyes close when our body tells us to instead of picking up another cup of caffeine and that addiction to go, 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 that demon kicks in and we find ourselves neglecting the third commandment to take Sabbath rest. We are all guilty of it. Me too. And that is why rest itself is resistance. Rest is resistance to the worldly ways of progression and self-definition. Rest truly is a pushing back against a society that has told us all since elementary school that we had better cross all our T's and dot all our I's or else. Or else. We've been conditioned in this world to always be going, always be doing more. We have FOMO, fear of missing out. And sadly, it makes us miss the most important things that we can only see when we do slow down. God knows it. Learning to practice rest is a way of experiencing freedom, liberation from the powers of this world that try and wear us thin. We all struggle greatly to trust God and put into faith that God is taking care of us at a deeper level than we can possibly imagine. We can let our guards down a little. We can relax. But there's always that little devil in there preaching the lie that we can't. And besides, we probably don't even know someone who is a good example at rest. We tend as people in our sinfulness to go one way or another in our extremes. We either rest way too much or we rest way too little. Our society has sadly taught us what the Bible teaches against. We have been socialized into a system that has tricked us into believing that our worth, our value, who we are is connected to how much we can produce. And buying into it, teaching that rubbish to others, we have imprisoned ourselves. Becoming people that are easily manipulated, people who are disconnected from the power of God, the power that is proven to us only when we rest, the power of God to take care of us even when we are perfectly still. And in this grind culture, taught to us by people that we trust and love, sadly, we have learned to live lives that are unsustainable. 
every one of us with schedules for ourselves and our families that Jesus would tear up. We need to learn again how to dream. And dreaming can only come with rest. Jesus knows this. In the gospel today, Jesus sees his apostles worn thin after working hard, and he invites them to rest. They have not been taking care of themselves properly. He tells them, tells us, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. At other times, he tells us, come to me and I will give you rest. And we justify our lack of rest because we claim that constantly being on the go means living our dream life. But in all reality, that dream we have just may not be in line with the dream that God has for us, a bigger and better dream that is in line with the commandments and what Jesus teaches. As Pastor Trisha, <clears throat> Trisha Hershey puts it in her new publication, Rest is Resistance, a source of inspiration for our Lenten program this year at St. Luke. She says, as a culture, we don't know how to rest. And our understanding of rest has been influenced by the toxicity of grind culture. We believe rest is a luxury, a privilege, and an extra treat we give ourselves after suffering from exhaustion and sleep deprivation. Rest isn't a luxury, but an absolute necessity if we are going to survive and thrive. And she continues by pointing out that, like hope, rest is disruptive. It allows space for us to envision new possibilities. When we don't rest, we get caught in the nightmare. Maybe you've experienced that before yourself. But when we rest, when we take time for a reset, we learn that God is right there looking forward to creating a new future for us, where all of God's blessings will truly flourish in our lives, the things that we really do want, but have settled for less. You've heard all the excuses in our culture for not obeying the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Maybe you say them. The early bird gets the worm. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Burn the midnight oil to get things done. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. All sayings that push back against trust in God's providence, God's loving care, turning instead to the self for success. Whatever this world has lied to us, that is. We have been commanded by the Father to take rest, to nap, to sneak away for some peace and quiet, to let go and let God. And when we failed, we have been reminded by Jesus Christ to remember God's ways taken by the hand. Like the first disciples, we are today being led to a time of rest and restoration. Do you hear the core of that word, restoration? At its core, it is all about rest. And this rest is about resurrection. It is Jesus who steps on the scene today to remind us just how important rest is. He has come to help us again dream and to see the world through God's eyes, where all things flourish because of God's loving care promised to us on every page of the Bible. When we burn the midnight oil, when we feel the drain on our bodies because of it, I hope that we can see the foolishness in the ways of this world. Because it is worn out and exhausted, where we are operating at far less capacity than we truly can. When we don't rest, we forfeit the hours we are granted by God for hope. A hope that will sustain us in ways that worry and sleepless nights never will. And the sleep that restores us, we are elevated, resurrected even, to our highest potential. It is through rest that we can be all that we can be. And God has created it this way. The power of a rested body. That is what the grind culture is keeping from us. Weak and worn is what this world wants. 
and it is working against everything God says to keep us from being who God truly created us to be. We've all pushed back against rest. We do it every day. And even during this set aside time for rest, the easiest Lenten discipline that you've probably ever heard, almost laughable, we have still all fallen short. The ways of the world that we strive against during Lent tricked us again. We judged ourselves and others as being lazy. We pushed back in the name of progress. We heard it as extremes. What, is he telling us to never work? The world doesn't work like that. But here's the real deal. And I think that we all know this in our core. Rest is not a waste of time. Rest is the only place where we can receive real energy for what we are going to have to face in life. When we rest, we get reconnected to the source of life itself. Through rest, our bodies heal from sickness and disease, not by always pushing them harder. We know this truth. We do know that this is how it works. When we honor our God-given bodies, when we obey the commandments, when we take Jesus' hand as he leads us for rest, we are far better off. And even if this world has tried to teach us something different, to hold us back, to make us sick and deprived, which is the exact goal of the forces of evil, no matter this, that we do have ingrained in us the truth, God's word that is leading us to green pastures. If you failed, like I did this Lenten season, by not really taking the opportunity to regain our trust in God and let go of the things that we turn to for safety and security that are other than God. If you still want to push back against the teaching of the Bible about the importance of rest, know this, there is always another opportunity. And we all need to better learn how to slow down and respond faithfully to the needs of our bodies, minds, and spirits. Thank God that Jesus sees us today in our tiredness, in our brokenness, and that his hand is held out for us today to take us to get the rest that this world tries so hard to deprive us from because he's right here and his hand is held out to you when you can admit that you need it, that you do need a nap. Please take it. Amen.